In this, in this movie, I want to talk about how phylogenetic trees are like mobiles. The mobiles that are in a kid's room or in a, hanging above a baby's crib are a good analogy for some a couple key features of phylogenetic trees. That feature is the order of the tips doesn't matter on a phylogenetic tree. So this, this mobile here is showing the planets. Now the planets do have an actual order to them, but this particular mobile, the planets, everything can move freely and spin freely on these nodes here on these rotation points. And that's how phylogenetic trees work. Every node, things can spin freely on there and rotate around. And that allows us to flip and move and change the relative order of the tips. But none of those changes actually change or modify the clade structure, the information structure of the phylogenetic tree. Here is using animals, so there's no confusion with the order of the planets. Again, these rotation points, a mobile can spin around above a baby's crib on these points. These are nodes. They um, just, uh, on, on a phylogenetic tree, we can spin around on a node and without changing the structure of a tree. So here's an easy example. We've got humans and geese here. There's a node there and a node there where the common ancestor was with frogs. We can easily just reverse the order of the human and the geese, the goose here, and that doesn't change anything. Humans are still in a clade with geese, and then ge human and geese are in a clade with frogs. All we've done is just changed who is on the outside. If you want to challenge yourself, you can think about what the newick notation is for this tree. So take a second, stop and think. Can you write out the notation in parentheses for this tree. You can call it fish one, fish two, frog, goose, and human. You can ignore the shark over there. So we can start with goose and human. We add frog on the left. Goose and human are surrounded by parentheses into a clade. Frogs Go next to them, surrounded by parentheses because the three fit into a clade. And then fish one and fish two, they are their own separate clade. They have a common ancestor there. So they have parentheses surrounding them, and then everybody gets wrapped in a clade. Newark notation is good for understanding phylogenetic trees, and it helps understand that why rotation doesn't matter. When we rotate around this node, all we're doing is changing whether human comes on the left or goose comes on the left in the node new notation, then everything is exactly the same. All we've changed is which, which name comes before the comma there. Here's another rotation example. Look at this tree up here and then this tree down here. Can you figure out which node or where in the tree was a ro did a rotation occur to move from this tree to the next tree? Go ahead and stop the video and think about that for a second. How can you rotate around a node, like a mobile, like a freely spinning mobile, how can you rotate around that node in order to go from A to B? It's this node here. We can take humans and frogs and we can just flip them over here. We move the fish and move them over there and we can make that change. Here's a slightly harder example. What node or perhaps nodes are used to convert these two trees? How do we go from this tree here down to the one on the bottom where we move cats and humans inside? Stop the video and think about that for a second. So it requires two nodes. First we do a rotation here and then we do a rotation there. So first we can rotate around this node here that brings humans and cats onto the inside. The lizard and the goose go there. The frog, you'll notice, is on the left here and it stays on the left there. So we haven't changed the position of the frog. And then we rotate around here. We flip around 
this fish and put it on there so we rotate around this lower node to incorporate that change. So we'll step through this here, we'll rotate around that node, we'll flip humans and cat onto the inside here, we'll then rotate around this node there, and then we'll move our fish to the outside. And again, frogs stay in place and all of the clades remain the same. So the human cats are always occur as a group, fish and goose always occur as a group, these four species always occur as a group. The next species we add to a larger clade includes frogs. Always, we can always draw a circle around all four of these species. What would be the Newick notation for these four species here? Pause the video and write that down. Got a perfectly symmetrical tree here with human and cats in one clade, lizard and goose in the other. So one, put them in parentheses, put these guys in parentheses, and then wrap them both in parentheses. If we wanted to add the frog, what would we do? Pause the video and think about that. All we have to do Start off with our original two clades. We add frogs on the outside and put parentheses around them. Here's a slightly harder rotation example because there's a lot of tax involved. How do we transfer from this tree here to that tree? Which node or nodes do we have to rotate on? Pause the video and think about that for a second. Take a look here. We've got A and B on the right hand side and then A and B on the left hand side there. Then look at the order of all of the letters. Pause the video. So actually what we have is a single rotation around this bottom node. You'll notice from right to left it goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H and we've just reversed the order. So it's just a complete 180 flip. So it's like it's rotated for you, towards you, and then all the way to the left. We've just reversed the order by rotating around this axis at the very bottom node. Now take a look at this. All three of these trees are the same. They have a different layout, but they actually all contain the exact same information. Can you figure out why that is true? What rotations are done in order to convert them. Pause the video and think about that for a second. So in order to go from this one on the left to this tree here in the middle, first we can rotate around this node here. So we take E, D, and C. We can think of it as if we are breaking off at or just below the node here. We take E, D, C, and B, rather break them off and then we can take our one branch here, A, and then just flip it around over there. We've got, again, E, D, C, and B here. We take our branch A that was separated, and we just flop it over here and reattach it. So E, D, C, B, A, E, D, C, B, and now A is on the outside. We can then do another rotation here where we can flip around, we can move our E and E, D, and C, and we just change the orientation. So it goes from E, D, C to D, E, C. Probably be more accurate to say the rotation is done up here or in the middle there. So here's another more complicated example because there's a lot of tax involved. How do we go from the one on top? The one on the bottom, they're exactly the same information, just different, different superficial look. You can think about this by saying there's three important groups. We have this clade of gorillas, chimps, and humans that gets moved into the middle here, orangutans, and then gibbons. Notice that the humans here are in the middle, so they're going to get rotated in. Orangutans are going to get rotated to the left here. They know 
occur on the, or excuse me, on the right. They get rotated to the right hand side, rotated to the right. And then gibbons always stay here next to old world monkey, excuse me, to um, rather the old world monkeys get flopped out here and now gibbons are occurring next to new world monkeys. So rotations are occurring around uh, these two nodes. We're gonna move this clay in here so the orangutans get flopped out there. And then the gibbons are going to stay in place. Um, excuse me, that doesn't... Just ignore that last little bit there. Here's a hard example. I'm not going to give you the answer. You can just think about how this would work. How did this change happen? Pause the video and think about it. Here's another challenge. See if you can sort out how these rotations occurred. 